Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be invited to deliver a keynote speech at the Green Smart Development and Vision Digital Conference, and I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. The United Nations Environment Programme Support for Cities is in its medium term strategy 2022-2025, addressing the three planetary crises, climate change, biodiversity loss and pollution. This is fueled by unsustainable consumption and production, so cities are going to be critical to address these threats. Cities cover 3% of the Earth's surface. The concentration of population and activities in cities cause massive pollution and environmental degradation, reaching far beyond local boundaries. Cities have a prominent space in UNEP, both as hotspots of problems and solutions. UNEP looks at cities and citizens for accelerating sustainable consumption and production and will focus on more sustainable and resilient value chains in the food, building, mobility, extractive and energy sectors, spurring integrated approaches to planning and design in public and private infrastructure, connecting grey, blue and sustainable infrastructure. UNEP implements Urban Shift, a global, global environment facility program. Bram uh, looks at integrated urban portfolio and has $147 million in GEF resources, but brings in $2.1 billion in co-financing in nine countries, including in Asia, China, India, and Indonesia. UNEP provides technical support to a range of city priorities, energy efficiency, buildings, transport, urban food systems, management of municipal waste, to utilizing green space and infrastructure. UNIP is working with the Asian Development Bank and the National Housing Authority to develop a tool called Building Passport, which will record energy efficiency levels. The creation of Building Passport will help the National Housing Authority raise green bond market to finance energy efficient projects. UNIP to help design green bonds. UNEP will also be working with Pune city authorities, including in helping design and develop public transport corridors with integrated residential and commercial development, along with walking and hiking pathways and supporting a district cooling pilot project. UNEP supports these take a more central role in the energy transition. Two thirds of energy is consumed in cities, so cities as coordinators and management managers of infrastructure uniquely placed to improve energy efficiency, promote circularity, integrate multiple sectors, incorporate renewable energy in buildings, transport, heating, cooling and power grids. We need to understand the financial opportunities of hardwiring the value of nature into economic system. Existing data shows if you invest in restoration, $30 in economic benefits. So we need to mobilize financing to invest in sustainable urban solutions as a lever to create impactful capital investments for long-term solutions. UNEP's finance initiative works with banks, investors and insurers to deepen their understanding of the risks and opportunities for businesses around nature. At the root of the three interconnected planetary crises are unsustainable patterns of consumption and production. These were already recognized in 1992 at the UN Conference on Environment Development as a major cause of the continued deterioration of the environment. Global urbanization is accelerating the proportion of people living in cities. This will be 60% in 2030, 66% in 2050. 90% of this will occur in Asia and Africa. Asia has more than 2.3 billion people living in cities, so the need for a sustainable urban future has never been greater. By 2050, 1.2 billion new urban residents will have implication for the region's economy, society and environment. So as the world's population becomes increasingly urban, cities become key to steer the world to a sustainable path of sustainable consumption and production. If we can meet, cities will be responsible for 65% of the sustainable development goals. So we're looking at the impact of cities on climate, on biodiversity, on pollution, 
If you look at social values, we need to make citizens participate more in decision making, empower them to make more critical decisions, as well as offer them opportunities to contribute to a healthy environment and healthier lives. So participation, intergenerational equity, bridging the digital divide are key elements to take into account. We also need the procedural environmental rights, including upholding fundamental freedoms, public participation and ensuring public access to information, equal access to justice for all on environmental matters. The definition of smart cities is still wide and varied depending on the entry angle that is used. During this World Environment Day on 5th June, we focused on how we rethink our relationship with nature, revive what has been degraded and restore what has been lost. This full environment demarked the official start of the UN decade on ecosystem restoration, a 10 year plan to prevent, halt, reverse the degradation of ecosystems worldwide. At the 7th Asia Pacific Urban Forum, they focused on nature based solutions, resilient infrastructure, and integrating urban and climate change planning as key policy pathways to deliver the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Restoring nature, reimagining how we can use it can deliver third of the climate action needed by 2030 to keep the world below two degrees. The next 10 years will be the most important to prevent catastrophes of climate change and extinction up to a million species. We need to re restore ecosystems that sustain urban areas and buffer them from the effects of climate change. In this regard, countries in this region have a range of nature-based solutions aimed at tackling climate change hazards in urban settings. These include smart city approaches that uses green infrastructure for adaptation to climate change. Both China and Thailand are piloting this approach as well as Singapore through its active beautiful clean water program. Development of integrated urban energy solutions will be critical to delivering system level efficiency and balancing a renewable space power system. Asian cities have a lot of experience in solutions like district heating and district cooling. Countries like China, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore, UNEP supports cities and national governments to improve their efficiency and renewable share of existing systems and develop district energy in new markets such as India and Vietnam. National policy is crucial to scale up such systems. Malaysia gives preferential thermal storage tariff to encourage district cooling and uses such systems to reduce peak cooling load. The region is also testing power system structures such as urban smart mini grids, which can improve system efficiency through sector integration, avoid transmission grid additions, unlock higher shares of local renewables. Singapore, Yokohama have developed pilots that have important results for the whole region. UNEP works to integrate these learnings into pilot cities and to promote demonstration areas that incorporate mini grids, district energy, building efficiency, improved urban design, and electric vehicles. If you look at the Punjol microgrid project in Singapore, adding a district cooling system to the existing renewable microgrid. Many Asian cities are facing the dual challenge of extreme heat and rising cooling demand. UNEP is working with cities and governments such as India, Vietnam and Cambodia to realize holistic urban cooling and extreme heat plants that drive increases in urban nature, improve urban design to stop trapping heat, trapping heat in cities, increase uptake of passive cooling and high efficiency district cooling. There's also social protection. This mirrors decade-long efforts by central Northern Asian countries to protect citizens from extreme cold. Rajkot in India, UNEP is working in a pilot, and this will be one of the first district cooling systems with the aim to reduce peak power demand and support long term power system, balancing through thermal storage. In parallel, the city is being supported to take increased action on building efficiency and particularly social housing, tree planting to reduce urban heat efforts to bring new financing models that monetize efficiency savings and bring investment to the city. The Secretary General's brief 
COVID-19 in an urban world stems from a cooperative effort involving the UN system, and it highlighted the urgent need to rethink and transform cities to respond to the reality COVID-19 and potential future pandemics, and to recover better by building more resilient, inclusive, and sustainable cities. We recognize that recovery from COVID-19 is something cities cannot do it. Multi-level governance is key to promote enable action to develop a national level effective policies, funding mechanisms and incentives, creating the enabling conditions for more resilient, inclusive, sustainable cities, and to support cities contribute to deliver national goals. Public sector spend ranges from 30 to 50 percent of the GDP in many different countries. So to recover from COVID-19, public spending we are seeing is being injected at unprecedented levels into national economies. We can achieve a lot by directing these to green projects and ensuring public procurement is sustainable. Many of the investments need to ensure green recovery should be in proven technologies such as solar, wind, energy systems, green buildings, smart grids, infrastructure for electric vehicles and efficient appliances. Cooling is emphasized by national governments as a major issue for the energy systems due to rapid urbanization. Asia, China, India account for more than half growth in space cooling demand in 2050, and India the share of space cooling in peak power nationally reached 45% by 2050. So we know that many solutions we look at, many of these are underdeveloped in many countries and could be boosted through COVID-19 recovery investments. Energy efficiency is a low-hanging fruit to solve the climate crises. The international energy Agency report on net zero energy sector by 2050 highlights 40% of reductions between now and 2030 can be achieved through existing technologies. This would require doubling the rate of energy efficient improvements. Examples of possible measures to step up the contribution of urban areas towards these goals while recovering from COVID-19 are more efficient climate-friendly cooling to tackle growing energy demand from addressing extreme heat through nature-based solutions, supporting sustainable and integrated cold chains of passive cooling solutions in buildings, super energy efficient appliances, and energy efficient vehicles such as plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicles, including for buses, two to three wheelers and only cars, and a huge climate mitigation potential lies in reducing methane emissions from oil and gas sector using existing technologies to identify leaks. We need to make sure a systems approach to the energy transition, including at the urban level where city governments can plan, integrate buildings, energy, and transport infrastructure in support of net zero energy systems. I thank you for your time and encourage you to keep positive and focus on the changes that we can all bring to build the new normal. I thank you.